Hello everyone. Welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English. About me, I'm Sandeep Bhushan. I have eight years of teaching experience in civil services. I teach international relations, internal security, and also in-depth analysis of Hindu newspaper. This video is in regards to how to crack prelims 2020. But prior to that, you have a notification in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English, which is India's largest learning platform. Once you get subscribed to it, you will have the access to the unlimited live and recorded courses from India's best educators. And also, you have the various other privileges that is daily live classes wherein you can chat with your educator, engage in discussions. You also have the live test and quizzes wherein you can evaluate your preparation with our regular mock tests and quizzes. You also have the structured courses wherein all our courses are structured in line with UPSC exam. You also have the unlimited access upon subscription. You will have access to all our live and recorded courses. And you also have the top educators who are amongst this and also from this screen you can see they are, they are all the top educators and you have the UPSC CSC for let's crack UPSC CSC you have all these courses for example polity environment current affairs and also in regards to the governance internal security CSAT paper and also interview preparation and in regards to UPSC CSC English for in regards to subscription you have 12 months of subscription and also you have the 24 months subscription 12 months subscription the original price is 40,000 wherein if you subscribe with my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala 10 you will get a discount of 10% upon 40,000 and then the discounted amount would be 36,000 and you also have the 24 months subscription wherein the original price is 48,000 and once you go ahead with subscribing with my code that is SBT10 you will get a discount of 10% and the discounted amount on 48,000 would be 43,200 and you would also have a benefit in regards to going ahead with the 24 month subscription because when you subscribe for 24 months you are actually paying for 13 months amount that is 40,000 for 12 months and then 8,000 8, for one month so you would be effectively paying for 13 months but you can have a subscription for the 24 months so this is an added advantage Take the bank some benefit of it and also you go ahead with when you go ahead with subscribing using my code SBT10 not you need not pay 48,000 but the discount would be up to 43,200 you can go ahead with uh, having all the live classes of mine not only mine but also the other top, uh, educators along with the all other courses you can go ahead so it is always recommended to go ahead with 24 month subscription wherein you will be benefited out of it and now I'll get into the topic that is the in-depth analysis of editorials and articles of the Hindu newspaper. I would wish to tell you once that the reasons why we need to go ahead with the in-depth analysis of the editorials and articles. Many of them feel that editorials and articles are not that important for prelims 2020. But as we have seen in the previous year's question papers of the UPSC in regards to the prelims, there were many questions which have been picked up from the editorials and articles and there were many of the keywords which have been picked up from the editorials and article there were many what do you say questions being picked up by many of the experts who have put in their views that is from their journals of publishing so there are many questions in regards to the factual and also in regards to the analytical point of view wherein you need to be very thorough in regards to the comprehensive understanding about the editorials and articles it, it, these both are definitely playing a vital role in the prelims and also mains that is the reason this video or the class or the session will definitely help you out to have a macro level approach in regards to the editorials and articles especially focusing on the prelims 2020 and also in regards to the mains 2020 now uh, before i get into the topics to be discussed uh, nikita kumari has said hi i would i would also go ahead with saying hi to nikita and hi to the one who have been also what do you say joined the one who are also part of the uh, uh, live classes i would say hi to everyone good evening to everyone and uh, my emphasis is that it is very important in regards to the editorials and articles as i've said that 
that you need to try you need to definitely get into the practice of identifying the keywords that is the key point in regards to having success in films and also in regards to the mains because many of them do not have this at i mean this kind of uh, approach towards the films so we will get into the topic now topics to be discussed that is social fissures safety of front line national lockdown and also you have the cash inequality so depending upon the time definitely i will go ahead with all the force which are in regards to the editorials and articles today so first we will get into the topic that is the first editorial wherein the heading of the editorial is mind the gap mind the gap so definitely there is what do you say the gap which is in regards to what the editor is talking about and we will look at definitely it is in regards to the malvika sajeevan has also joined i would say hi to even malvika hi to malvika and i would request you all that whenever you have any kind of queries please put in queries and if you are having any doubts or need to be explained further please let me know so that i can go ahead with a further explanation in regards to your what do you say the way you wanted the class and i i request that if it is better if we have the interaction in the what do you say the the session it would always be beneficial for you so i would start up this that is in regards to the social fissures so i would i have taken this heading of this editorial as social fissure so what is this it is definitely in regards to the again coronavirus the spread it has taken place and then the way it has impacted the entire human kind across the across the uh, globe so we will de definitely look at how it has actually taken place and why the reason that the virus has hit very badly because if we compare it or if we look at the previous cases or previous times definitely there was sars there were the, i mean we have seen ebola we have seen nipa we have seen indra virus we have also seen mers that is middle east respiratory syndrome so all these have actually what you say have also what you say infected human beings but this sars cov2 is the one which has impacted very 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 drastically and it has hit very badly the human life so that is what what is making us to understand that how best we can try to make sure that we can try to eliminate that kind of bonding or that kind of what you say in that we are getting into the forest areas and thereby the outbreak now which has happened is definitely going ahead like it is spreading virulent to the human kind so we will look at that why this kind of what you say the virus has spread very virulent to across the world that is from the southeast asia asia and then middle uh, west asia and then middle east asia and then again from the europe to even usa so we will look at actually we all know that it was china which was the epicenter of the virus which has been uh, the uh, wuhan district in the hubei province and we have very clear what do you say information or the idea that it is the spread of virus which has happened very virulent and then now we will look at the main reason why because china is having or it is a biggest trading partner now we will look into the reasons why it has spread so virulent comparing this sars cov2 with the previous sars or previous viruses which have taken place as i have mentioned ebola nipa virus or in regards to the uh, h1n1 bird flu if you look at even hiv all these they haven't spread so virulent the way sars cov2 has taken place the reason is that china as china is the biggest trading partner and madhu also has joined uh, just uh, before i further uh, take up the class madhu has joined i would say hi to your madhu now we are going ahead with the, uh, the first editorial today editorial we are going at madhu so you have just joined good as the china is the biggest trading partner and then it is trading with almost 120 countries across the region that is spreading from europe to even us so as there is what you say trading i mean the china is not only the uh, what you say epicenter of this virus but is also the the epicenter in regards to the trade which takes place the china which takes place in regards to the various countries across africa southeast asia and also in regards to even europe and then getting i mean it is linking towards even britain that is uk so we have the trade link which the china is going ahead by emphasizing its 
main focus that it would definitely go ahead with having trade with maximum countries of the world and then we have seen that because of this trading please do understand this because china being the biggest trading partner so we are linking this trade with epidemic please do understand so i'm trying to link this trade with epi the, the 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 kind of what you say spreading of virus which was virulent so i would say hi to everyone not only the one who i have I have said to one but the one who are now entirely in the you know, listening to my class hi to everyone and the others who have also joined please let me know if there is any kind of what you say uh, explanation to be made further so now i'm linking this trade because china is being the trade part, biggest trade partner now i'm linking it with the virus which has spread virulent so we we we, we know that because when china has so much of trading with various countries i mean ranging from southeast asia and again in regards to the africa europe and then us after the what do you say outbreak of disease or after the outbreak of disease at least 4 lakh 30000 people traveled from china to us so please do understand this why the virus has spread so virulent comparing the sars cov 2 with the previous viruses wherein the previous viruses did not what do you say go ahead with damaging so much in regards to the health and also into the in regards to the economy but this sars cov 2 has impacted or it has damaged lot in regards to the health crisis and then in regards to the economic crisis so we are looking into the reasons the one is china being the biggest trading partner and then even after the outbreak we have seen 4 lakh 30000 people who have traveled from china to us so this is the main reason or the cause how the virus has spread across the globe and then when we look at even the kind of what you said uh, the the passengers or the foreigners who get into india also if we just compare it with the end of march 2019 6.9 crore international passengers have are have arrived in india so this is what i'm linking with the trading because of the the way we have this international trade the way we have this tourism the way we have the uh, what do you say enter hospitality in everything in place that is a service sector because of all this trading and then tourism that is service sector the more of what do you say people moving from one country to other countries is happening so when this is happening definitely there is a point that the germs get along with these travelers and then they travel globally and then many contagious diseases are passing or it is what you say influencing the entire global so this is what it is happening so people might be traveling because of the trade or because of the religion or even because of the pleasure so whatever reasons it could be the people traveling across the world we we know that very clearly the germs also travel with the travelers and i mean globally and also they are contagious so this is the main reason that how this is going on or the spread of the sars cov 2 has happened so virulent and it is impacting i mean the mortality rate or else in regards to the the fatality rate across the global countries is very high compared to the other viruses so if you look at the history of the mankind we have seen that no other pandemic was as fast as the lower coronavirus that is in regards to the sars cov 2 because as china being the center of the world trade and economy so as this is the main reason that the virus has spread very virulent and then we are also very clear that why this traveling is happening or why this trade is happening because there is a intense human hunger for new economic opportunities and pleasure so this is very important in regards to the key phrase when you are actually writing an answer in the mains point of view so what is the main reason why this global travel is happening or what what is that it is motivating the people to have this global travel and then move across the world that is it is the human hunger for what for new economic opportunities this is very very important for new economic opportunities and also for the pleasure they are moving across the globe and that is making it very clear that the spreading of the virus is also taking place or it is what is spreading through the travelers so what are the reasons for this so how the challenges one we can face it so what are the areas of concern in regards to the the virus being spread across the various countries so we know that the spread of virus has been what is a complicated because of what do you say social prejudices we have and then we also have xenophobia xenophobia in the sense it is nationalism 
and then we have some kind of perilous political agendas and also in regards to particular social groups so we are trying to look at how this what do you say the, the the virus is spreading and it is actually confusing deliberately by various sections of people so there are social prejudices prejudices in the sense like biasness and also you have the what is a people trying to justify xenophobia that is nationalism and also in regards to political agendas and social group so if you look at all this and again compare with how the social prejudices is taking place that is socially how the biasness is taking place so if you compare with the what do you say if you compare with the uh, americans how they look at the asian origins please do understand this how i am trying to say so there are many challenges and then because of the what do you say global travel which is happening the global travel because of the human hunger for new economic opportunities because of this there is definitely a challenge wherein uh, we all are what do you say bound to face it and what is main important of the challenge that is the social prejudices so us or the americans look at asians or else they go ahead with targeting the asian origin people and then it is us who is targeting the asian origin people that is the social prejudice is definitely into consideration there again when we look at within india also we have the i mean we look at northeastern region again we look at that they are the people who were in at this juncture we have seen many a cases that probably these northeastern regions people might have been infected because of the china being the border and then we have kept them aside and then they we did not i mean many of the indians i mean who are not part from the northeastern states have kept them under attack in regards to even pandemic and also we have seen many personal attacks even in the national capital so there is definitely social prejudices and please do understand the way we are linking this editorial we are linking this trade with the spread of the virus again we are linking this global travel to the spread of the virus again we are linking the global travel to the social prejudices and then we are linking the kind of prejudices wherein us targets the asian origin again within india there is lot of what you say we look at the northeastern uh, uh, origin people as a different kind of people so there is definitely the prejudice which is happening and then now we will come to the point actually what is happening so we have also seen the tablighi jamaat which the conference or the congregation has taken place in the nizamuddin and that is actually what is a erupted or it has searched the entire covid 19 spread of virus being infected to many many people across this across the country and because of this what has happened is muslims in general are facing the new hostility in some parts of the country so we have looked at the us versus asian origin india within india again india india versus i mean indians versus the northeasterns again we are linking with with the social prejudices with the the kind of what is on the aftermath of the tablighi jamaat congregation in the nizamuddin that is in delhi again the spread of infectious or the symptoms of covid 19 has spreaded very virulent across the country and because of this again the muslims in general are facing renewed hostility hostility in the sense a kind of resentment or anger so this is what is happening and what is the other thing which is a concern or the challenge is in some instances even these public leaders are rebellious or they are non cooperative in regards to the contract tracing and then they have being part of the many of the avalanches avalanches of the cases in the sense they are the one because of that the cases have shoot up or it has surged and now we have looked at the challenges like prejudices and also the kind of what you say muslims in general what they are facing and non cooperative being in regards to the contract tracing we will also look at the what is the measures which can be dealt in regards to the social prejudices and also the kind of what you say public leaders or the one who have been infected and how they are non cooperative in regards to the contract tracing so what has to be the measure there must be discussion on what went wrong how it went wrong and then why the disease has spread in india because there should not be any kind of blame game that trying to be made between the in regards to the public jamaat not a blame game between the central government and then uh, and then in regards to the uh, uh, delhi delhi government but irrespective of that they have to be what do you say discussion or they have to look into that 
how what went wrong and how it went on and then why is the disease spreading and then the prime importance of the now is that to control the disease to contain the virus that is very very important and all efforts have to be in regards to the attention of the government to contain and mitigate that is to resist the spread of virus and also to make sure that the virus is not spreading very virulent and all sections must be protected cared and by the state so why i am saying this all sections should be protected because as i was using the keyword that is social prejudice as a, as i was linking in regards to the us versus asian origin indian again indian versus northeasterns again within india because of the tablik e jawan many of the muslims were what you say looked at and they were also what you say a kind of resentment or anger they have shown so it is the duty or the responsibility of the state to make sure that the state protects and cares the all the sections of the people keeping aside all the what you say religion and then only at the important or the now the what is the prime important or the necessity is to make sure that to contain the virus to mitigate the virus to go ahead with the tracing of the Uh, the infected person to test the infects infected persons to treat the infected person so this is the what is the necessity of the state at this moment and the other measure is in regards to the legal and police action wherein it is a duty bond for the pol police that they are empowered to go ahead with the legal and police action because of the national lockdown because of the national lockdown many of the acts have been invoked when the national lockdown has taken place and then these police actions or the legal action have can come into existence when people are not cooperating with the officials in regards to the social distancing so that is also a measure which can be taken up but what is very very important is that care must be taken against adding fuel to the fire of communalism so this is very very important as we are reeling under pressure because of the spread of the covid 19 that is sars cov 2 the 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 entire machinery entire government machinery the the hosp i mean the doctors the nurses the uh, frontline workers government uh, municipal uh, machineries staff administration everyone is totally into what you say uh, they wanted to contain the virus but at this time if there is any kind of what you say adding fuel to communalism so it will again be a, a kind of situation which would be out of control it should be very very chaos so in that regard the measure is the government has to take care that there is nothing of any communalism uh, what do you say angle which is been added to this and what we can conclude with this what you, uh, in regards to this editorial is that the battle against virus must not deepen existing social fissures so what is important is we need to keep aside any kind of social fissures that is any kind of what is a social uh, uh, kind of disturbances are there we need to keep aside all those and then what is important is only to go ahead with war against the virus that is the main thing and then the social fabric has to be very very intertwined the social fabric has to be intertwined so that there will not be any social fissures that is loosening of the social fissures and then keeping all the keeping aside the social prejudices and then making sure that entire human kind is fighting against the war that is against the covid-19 or sars cov 2 so this is very important in regards to the the way we have linked it with the editorial which says the mind mind the gap so we have linked it with the social fissure this is very important because again it could be part of the mains the the part of the means wherein it could be a question and then how the social fabric is protected or the social fabric can be damaged because of few reasons because of tablighi jamaat or because of the communalism which can take place a color into this entire epidemic and then it could be a chaos to the government and to the what do you say entire machinery to contain the virus so any doubts please let me know before i move ahead in regards to the next topic please let me know i mean please type i mean you can just key in in the chat box i will try to what you say get back to you immediately before i get back to the next next topic please let me know or if there is no uh, no no doubt sir okay madhu said okay 
fine if anyone else apart from madhu who can go ahead with typing that if there are anything i need to go ahead further explanation or you have any doubt in this please let me know if you say carry on i will carry on with the next one Nikita Kumari, can I go ahead? Malvika Sajivan, can I go ahead with the next uh, topic? Okay, I will go ahead with the next topic. Hope so that I mean you, I mean everything is clear. Yes. Now it's in regards to the safety of front line or else the, the next editorial which talks about do no harm, do no harm. So what kind of harm and who is harming, I mean whom, is it that virus is harming us or we have harmed the, the, the kind of what you say system wherein we shouldn't have uh, gone into that or we shouldn't have barged into it and then have taken the heading as safety of front line. Safety of front line. I think now you can, Malvika Sajivin also said, okay, sir, okay, fine. So now I'm, I'm into the next editorial of today's that is in regards to the do no harm. So, what is important here is as we all know that because of the lockdown of the coronavirus, social distancing has to be maintained, the, the, the stricter measure in regards to maintaining the social distance. So, what is important is that the one who are working for the entire mankind or entire humankind or entire 1.3 billion people yes they are the real warriors that is the doctors the nurses the frontline workers or else even in regards to the uh, municipal uh, administration municipal machinery even police police department they are the one who are actually the frontline workers and they are the actual what do you say the heroes who are who are working or who are working for us relentlessly not even what do you say uh, worried about their life so they are the real heroes and they should actually have the safety they should be what do you say protected even from the government and even from the each and every responsible citizen of india so i will before i i mean when we get into this uh, topic or the editorial i would look at or i will make sure that how few of the organizations have uh, spoken about the frontline workers and then who has what do you say given a guidelines in regards to the how to address the workplace violence in especially in the health sector and they have also supported that the development of violence prevention policies so they have come up with the Development of violence prevention policy. So the WHO has come up with the guidelines wherein the guidelines are mainly addressing the workplace violence in the health sector and especially focusing on the violence prevention policies. Please do understand this for the main point of view key phrase violence prevention policies. So what kind of violence prevention policies are, are there from the WHO and why is it necessary? And because of what reasons the WHO has come up with the guidelines in regards to the workplace violence so that they have come up with the violence prevention policies. So that is very important that how they wanted to go ahead with the safety of the frontline workers. Please do understand the WHO has come up with the guidelines. The same way even the United Nations Special Rapporteur or the Speaker Spokesperson Basket Tunkak has also said that in regards to the human rights of the environmentally sound management and disposal of hazardous substances and waste. So this is again important that is human rights of the environmentally sound management and disposal of hazardous substances and waste. So this is in regards to the they are healing or they are what you say supporting the healthcare workers as heroes. So that is very important even UN special representative has also said that the healthcare workers are the heroes and who have to be protected they have to be given the safety net so that they are actually working for us and then the the un rep special representative has also accepted that there are definitely shortages in regards to the protective equipment or the protective uh, gear wherein they have to be given in regards to while they are working as a frontline workers 
to combat the what do you say the pandemic or else in regards to the plague or any kind of viruses which actually happens or any kind of pathogens we have seen in the past so they are the one who should be given the pro protective gear or protective equipment so that they will go ahead with making sure that making sure that they will be protected okay nikita kumari has said please explain about violence prevention policies yes 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 definitely violence prevention policies i will I, when i get into the what do you say next next uh, page wherein i will be explaining the reasons i mean the, i will take few uh, facts and then i will be explaining that then 100% this violence prevention policies will come into existence i suppose uh, you got the point nikita kumari i will definitely what do you say uh, now I, i have come up with the what is a various uh, ppts so that when i am explaining those you will understand and also i'll link it with the violence prevention policies i hope you have understood please uh, nikita kumari i'll go ahead just type whether you have what do you say can i i will i'll explain it in the next so even the doctors at the work, work hard now you will get it yeah yeah we have seen what do you say in india at the work hard hospitals the doctors and workers who have been tested positive while treating patients so this is very important where we they were actually what do you say treating patients but because of the what do you say the infected patients even the doctors were infected while they were treating the patients and well they were infected they were looked at as an enemy they were looked at as an enemy and then when they do when it is like they are not a what is a friend but a foe when they are looking at them as a treating them as a foe the enemy then what will happen is the virus together will be what do you say having strength or else the virus will become more viral because the front line workers are if we are looking at them as an enemy or if we are looking at them as the one who are been infected and if we are if we do not want them to be part of the what do you say society then again it is a kind of an inhibition wherein we are creating that we are not respecting the front line workers now you will understand the point now i have put here the assaults on healthcare workers nikita will understand now the point of what i was talking about violence prevention policies that we need to safeguard them that we need to safeguard not only from the violence but also making sure that they have the protective i mean they will not have any shortage in regards to the protective gears protective equipment when they are actually what do you say <coughs> handling the patients in this case in regards to the sars cov 2 so we have seen in indore that is in madhya pradesh we have seen in indore that is in madhya pradesh wherein the doctors and the healthcare workers along with the civic officials were what do you say attacked they were attacked with the stones so this is the violence this is the violence against the healthcare workers this is the violence against the front line workers when they are actually working in the pandemic situation so this is not at all acceptable so the the policies would be against the kind of violence by the locals or be, it could be any 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 area any country any state so we have seen that two women doctors were injured and we have also seen again in what you say ranipur area locals spitting at officials so when they are spitting at officials that means they have gone for actually screening the local people whether they have been infected by the virus so when they are spitting again if the healthcare workers or the front line workers are not having the protective gears or protective equipment then definitely they will be what do you say infected by the virus that is what is this violence preventive policies so it is not only in regards to the violence but also in regards to the protective so their policies have to be against the what is a locals attacking with the doctors and then what is a locals in this case spitting at officials so that they will not be infected the the one who is getting into the local areas to go ahead with the screening that is praise and then test and then treat three t's and then we have also seen what you say doctors and at hyderabad gandhi hospital were also attacked by the patients so this is again against the violence so there has to be a policies in place which will be helpful or legally the healthcare workers would be having some kind of what you say protection 
So those are the one wherein the uh, WHO has come up with the guidelines. And in this case, when what you say, these people, whoever is at, attacked, the doctors, healthcare workers, and civic officials at Indore and even in Ranipur and also in what is a Hyderabad. And also we have seen the Asha workers who have been attacked even in Bangalore. Fine. So when they have gone to collect data of the COVID-19 symptoms. So when we have looked at all these, definitely the policy that is in regards to the violence prevention policies are that, that the government of that particular state or the police of that particular state has the right to go ahead with filing the case. Because, because of the pandemic or the national lockdown, we have seen that the central government has invoked many, many acts. For example, Essential Commodity Act, we have seen Epidemic Disease Act, we have seen even in regards to National Disaster Management Act, we have seen the uh, Section 144 of IPC and also Criminal Procedure Act. So all these acts are into, what do you say, action. They are, what do you say, actually now into action and then the police can definitely take what you say action against these locals who have attacked the doctors pitted on them and then even in regards to the locals who have uh, attacked the doctors at Gandhi hospital even on the Asha workers so these are the prevention prevention policies so policies are what definitely whenever the pandemic like situation comes into existence the all these acts will be invoked by the respective countries and that will be a kind of what you say preventive policies violence preventive policies i think now nikita has understood yes okay fine you have hidden uh, thank you sir yes so these are the one actually what you say preventive uh, policies and we have seen even in mumbai dharavi dharavi is as i mean does anyone know about this dharavi If, we, if you know yes or no, just type yes or no so that I will just move ahead. Dharavi is the one wherein when the police personnel have, what you say, entered into that Dharavi area, loca lo locality, wherein when they got to know that a person was tested positive and then the local youth has also assaulted the police personnel here. So look at the one who is actually, what you say, trying to protect everyone, the police is under the threat. And even in Tamil Nadu, we have seen the health inspector has been what do you say, attacked or uh, allegedly assaulted by the, what do you say, a family who was to be isolated, who have actually attended the Nizamuddin conclave. So this Dharavi is the biggest or Asia's biggest slum, which is in Mumbai, Dharavi, say. biggest slum in the Asia, Dharavi. So these are the, what do you say, assaults on the healthcare workers and these not to be so the WHO has come up with the guidelines making sure that there would be violence prevention policies by invoking the acts by the respective what do you say countries or respective countries that is in regards to India central government and also in regards to the state governments. Now I would go ahead with concluding this editorial which was saying do no harm that is safety of frontline workers. We need to protect the one who is actually protecting us. We need to protect the, our heroes who are fighting day in, day out. Not even what you say worried about their life because just looking at the television itself, when we look at the television news itself, we will be a little bit tensed, under stress, kind of what you say anxiety, anguish develops for us itself. But when they are in that mode of what you say, uh, they are actually uh, trying to help the patients come out or they are into the treatment. Definitely it is a kind of what you say, a, a big job which has been done by the frontline workers and it is a responsibility of the government and also responsibility of the responsible citizens. All the 1.3 billion people responsibility that whatever the national lockdown has been imposed, we have to maintain it very strictly to make sure that the social distancing is maintained. And then once the what you say tracing and then testing and treatment takes into consideration or the quarantine takes place, we have to abide by it. No, not abide by it, then definitely the violence preventive policies, that is all the acts what I've told, will be implemented or will be taken into action by the, the concerned authorities. It could be police or it could be the government machinery. And the conclusion is that the responsibility of restoring order 
and ensuring the safety of all health workers whether with personal protective equipment that is what uh, i was what you said repeatedly saying protective equipment or against attacks so the attacks it could be violence or it could be what is a shortage of protective equipment or protective gear from the public ultimately rest with the government ultimately rest with the government and in equal measure the people please do understand this and if at all this statement is given in the examination in the mains to write an answer i suppose everyone is listening to me if suppose this statement is given as a question in the mains the responsibility of restoring order and ensuring the safety of all healthcare workers whether with personal protective equipment or against attacks from the public ultimately rest with the government and in equal measure the people discuss or comment so now you have this solid information you have the what do you say the comprehensive understanding about how you can write the answer so that you are now well equipped to make sure that you are confident in regards to analytical question in regards to the prelims and also the mains descriptive answer because this could be part of the science and technology please do understand in the science and technology of the mains question paper this could be a question and asked you to comment or discuss so now you know what are the responsibilities what are the violence given by the who guidelines again by the united nations what do you say their representative and then what how the government takes up or what are the acts which have been invoked and then how various people have been at different places different states in the country people have reacted against the frontline workers and then who is held responsible along with the government it is we it is we i am saying we everyone the responsible citizen because always citizen tries to blame blame or what you said tries to put the uh, onus on the government whenever something is going wrong no it is a responsibility of each and every individual that is a citizens that we are also part of the the measure to be taken into consideration and this is also very important every healthcare worker is oriented on the principle first do no harm because when they are actually going ahead with the kind of they have this medical uh, treatment when they go ahead with this entire uh, process when they go ahead training goes ahead they they are being taught that first do no harm that is very very important and that is how they are actually not to harm anyone but to protect everyone but in turn they are actually there to protect everyone to protect the lives of everyone who is infected but they are the one who are been what do you say attacked so who has to take care it is a government and it is the we everyone now please to uh, let me know whether you have understood it thoroughly any questions please let me know i will move further to the next topic please let me know so that you can say just carry on sir or okay i mean i will just move ahead with the next okay fine i'll go ahead with the next one the next article which talks about democracy should not permit a trade off democracy should not permit a trade off this is very very important again in regards to mains point of view in regards to mains point of view this is very very important because as we have discussed that at the time of the national lockdown epidemic disease act has been what you say come into existence and this epidemic disease act again this is for the prelims point of view which is very very important it has actually come into existence because of the bubonic plague which has actually hit very badly in the maharashtra in 1897 in maharashtra in 1897 so this was the time which has actually gone ahead with the uh, the uh, government that is the british colonial rule british indian time the maras in maharashtra when there was a buponic plague that means it is kind of what you say inflammation in the armpit or in the groin area wherein this plague has happened because of the rats 
So this act has prohibited public gathering and they have also regulated, they have contained the travel and then routine screening and segregation and the quarantine. That means whatever is happening now, that was part of the act in regards to the Epidemic Disease Act. Then in the year 1897 when the Maharashtra or else specifically the Bombay, I mean now Mumbai, then Bombay was attacked by the bubonic plague. Then what has happened is, we will look into a bit of what you say, the, the past. Bal Gangadhar Tilak, who is also described as the father of Indian unrest, by Valentin Tirol of Times London. This again for the prelims point of view from history, please do understand this. Who has actually what you say, uh, uh, described Bal Gangadhar Tilak as the father of the Indian unrest. It is Valentine Tirol of the Times, that is London, was imprisoned for 18 months during this epidemic disease act because the act prohibited the public gathering and also what you say segregation and routine and in his newspaper that is his newspaper is called as the Kesari Balgangadhar Silax newspaper again for films he has then criticized the measures being taken up by the government to tackle the epidemic please do understand this the way we will link it now with the what has happened by I mean then by Bal Gangadha Tilak in regards to the Epidemic Disease Act and then we will link it with what is happening now in the modern India. Please do understand. Now in what you say this time, this what you say uh, 21st century. So why he has uh, what you say uh, uh, opposed or criticized the, uh, the Epidemic Disease Act 19, 1897? That means people were affected and the po population then they were not allowed to go out for even the medical treatment and thereby there was a lot of stress, anxiety and panic within the people. That is what was made very much, what you say, concern to Balganga Tilak. And in his newspaper, he, in a newspaper that is Kesari, he has criticized the measures taken up by the British India government of the Epidemic Disease Act 1897. And in June 1897, this is again from the, what you say, history prints point of view. Damodar Hari Chapekar and Bal Krishna Hari Chapekar. They were the one who have come together, the brothers, and then they have gone ahead with assassinating W.C. Rand. And this was the first, I mean, the one who was the plague commissioner of Pune then. And then they have, what do you say, killed this, or they have assassinated this, the plague commissioner that is W.C. Rand. And then later on, why again? Because they did not like the kind of, what you say, imposition or the isolation of the quarantine which was taking place by the, or taken up by W.C. Rand who was a play commissioner of Pune then, or the, what you say, Bombay province. And then these two brothers later on were hanged in summer 1899. So this is again for the prelims point of view, very, very important. And when we look at now the latest one in regards to the national lockdown, we have seen that the government, the way it has handled the issue of the migrant laborers, the way the migrant laborers have gone ahead with moving from one place to another place or moving from the, what do you say, states wherein they have got into for the work and then later on they wanted to wish or they were wishing to get into their respective states because of the national lockdown, because there was no economic activities and then they have taken roads. And then they did not find any kind of what you said transport facilities. So they were actually the working in the unorganized sectors classes. And this has created a lot of panic on, among the migrant workers. And because of the national lockdown, they have moved from their, the place where they were working into the respective states. And this is actually a kind of what you say neglect on the, by the government of India on the migrant workers. Wherein these are the one migrant workers who are part of the unorganized working class or the informal sector wherein they are actually the shoulders of the Indian economy wherein it rests. So many of the people or else the entire informal sectors are the one wherein the our 40% of our in Indian economy is actually coming from the informal sectors or from the unorganized sectors. But the government really did not what do you say, understand or did not forecast the situation of the migrant workers and that was the worry of the, what do you say, the one who was badly hit was the migrant workers because of the national lockdown. So we have looked at 
what has happened with the epidemic disease act 1897 who has reacted bal gangadhar tilak and then damodar hari chapekar and then balakrishna hari chapekar who have assassinated wc rant again we are linking it with now the what has happened in regards to the national lockdown with the epidemic of sars cov 2 wherein the government could not really what you say foresee the migrant laborers and then they could what you say did not take the consideration of having the entire foolproof mechanism in place to handle the situation of the migrant workers and then we have also seen that on march 6 the michel bachelet have of the united nations high commissioner for human rights have advised the governments to ensure and to adopt to control the virus which will not affect the people's life this is very important so in spite of what you say un high commissioners for human rights has advised the governments across the countries that the the kind of national lockdown should not impact adversely on the people's life and also on mass 16 we have seen united nations human rights experts have also gone ahead with a deep concern the way the many of the leaders across the countries across the globe were exercising their powers on dealing with the pandemic which they were not happy so united nations high commissioner for human rights and also united nations human rights expert and also when we look at again supreme court of india has also in two petitions it has also talked about the welfare of the migrants so wherein the government central government has actually demanded the courts to impose the censorship on the media reports wherein the government was asking the central supreme court of india to impose the censorship over media reports but the supreme court has said that no or it has rejected the plea of the uh, government central government and it has suggested the journalism that to go ahead with or rely on the official bulletins but then should not go ahead with any kind of personal uh, interviews and then that discussion should not be published in the newspaper which will create panic in the entire what do you say the one uh, the people who read the newspaper or who looks into the television so the even the central government that is the indian government also demanded taking into the advantage of this pandemic situation they wanted to impose censorship over media this is again very very important for the main point of view kind of what you say censorship wherein the indian government was trying to impose on the media and then we will look at the overreach of the power so because of the power to handle the pandemic which is an extraordinary measures by imposing the emergency we have seen what you say many authoritarian leaders across the globe they have what you say gone ahead with imposing that emergency or imposing that unprecedented power onto the countries at the cost of the legislatures judiciary the media the civil society and also the civil liberties this is very very important in regards to the main point of view because how is the what you say various countries or various governments across the globe have taken the advantage of this what you say national lockdown or because of the handling the pandemic situation and then how they have gone ahead with imposing or acting as an authoritarian leaders by keeping aside the powers of the legislatures judiciaries the media civil societies and civil liberties and this is very important because the media the civil society the civil liberties this could be again i am emphasizing here this could be again in the general essay in the general essay how the governments have gone ahead with taking the emergency or handling the pandemic situation trying to set aside or what do you say keep aside the media the powers of the media civil society or to suppress the civil society and to suppress the li civil liberties in regards to handling the pandemic that is sars cov 2 so you have the better now understanding about all this and the decision to close down without arranging any simultaneous situ i mean uh, arrangements is also a, a kind of what is a, a, a an impact on the indian society wherein it has resulted to brutality and violence because we have seen many cases wherein the police has reacted very aggressively onto the people wherein they have come onto the streets no doubt they should have maintained the social distancing but 
brutality and the violence which has been uh, taken up by the few police department of police officials is also not what do you say taken into consideration and then we have seen what do you say a group of people were sprayed by the chemical solutions in bareilly in uttar pradesh just by actually they were supposed to disinfect the buses wherein the migrant workers would get into the bus but as they were not what do you say totally educated that what do you say uh, the officials municipal officials they have sprayed the chemical solutions onto the migrant workers this is again what do you say kind of overreach of power and then you have scenes of police swinging their lattes as we have discussed that they were the one they were indiscriminately punishing the one who have not maintained the social distancing so this is all the overreach of power that is the power which is been given to the state government or to the central government because of the national lockdown or because of the pandemic how to handle the pandemic situation and then we have seen around the world now we will look at we have seen that they were not actually committed to democracy or human rights this is very very important against for the main point of view because i did discuss about in regards to the media civil society and civil liberties and now again i am linking it with the how the what do you say the, in in the in the, across the world how many of them have taken the advantage of this pandemic situation of the national lockdown and how the democracy or human rights were not precisely given due importance so we will look at few of the countries that is in israel we have seen the prime minister that is benjamin netanyahu who is facing the corruption charge and the breach of trust in israel has closed on the judiciary and postponed his own trial so look at how we are trying to compare it with the the powers what the central government or powers the states have now because to contain the pandemic but it is been used in a different way different methods how the what do you say indian government has reacted how the what is a world various countries have reacted i am trying to focus so that when you are writing an answer when there is a question in regards to the impact because of the pandemic situation wherein the impact was negatively on the democracy of the country or human rights or onto the media or onto the civil liberties or civil society so now you have the better understanding so benjamin netanyahu has done in that way and then when we look at hungary also the prime minister of hungary viktor orban is is a very famous for anti migrant what do you say uh, uh, that he doesn't allow the migrants to get into hungary i mean we have seen that even when that uh, entire europe when uh, from middle east or from uh, iraq and syria people were getting into as migrants into europe the hungary did not what do you say uh, go ahead with uh, getting or uh, allowing them to get into the country and now he is just ruling the country with a decree that is by an order and then even in regards to philippines we have seen the president that is roderick duterte has also gone ahead with broad emergency power in the name of what do you say tackling the virus and also in regards to the chile also there is a state of catastrophe there wherein we have this anti government dissent or anti government revolt which is happening in chile and now because of the pandemic it is very easy for the chile government that whatever the state of catastrophe is actually being what do you say uh, prevailing in chile because of the anti government dissent it has been suppressed now which is actually going on since last year because of this what do you say pandemic situation to handle the pandemic situation how the over power or overreach of the power in india and across the world we have taken the example of the israel hungary philippines and also the chile and now we will look at the modern state and we know that this whatever we have the states now they are definitely the product of history and product of the historical what is a specific because of that now the modern state has come and the, when the modern state has come up so definitely there is a common determination that is the ruthless ambition to control the minds and bodies of citizens so what is actually what is providing them this is because of the kind of epidemic or pandemic like situation and because of that a a, a, a kind of what is a action or the method is taken into consideration of that ruthless ambition to control the minds and bodies of citizens and that is also to some extent extent it is right because 
it is making sure that the social distancing is taken into consideration social distancing is maintained or it is what you say uh, it takes place in the complete sense so that we can try to break the transmission chain of the virus and then epidemic proved an opportunity to accomplish precisely this what what precisely this the ruthless ambition of few of the modern states i'm saying not all few of the modern states to suppress whatever internally the anti government protests are going on or any what is a opposition trying to raise the concern against the government so those kind of what you say situations or those kind of countries have the opportunity to accomplish that because of the epidemic and they have kept aside the media judiciary and the civil society so there's lot of time the media judiciary civil society civil liberties human rights are always coming in 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 my what you say this uh, discussion so you need to be very clever enough to identify all these keywords which will definitely be part of the analytical question in films and also in regards to the mains and then because of all this there is definitely dismantling of the constitution look at the way we are trying to what you say get to a conclusion because of the overreach of the power because of the 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 intention to control the uh, pandemic there is dismantling of the constitution in many countries dismantling of the institutions and this will have a major impact on the society please do understand on the sidelines of controlling or the national controlling of the pandemic situation of covid uh, covid 19 or sars to uh, sars cov 2 the dismantling of the constitution and institutions will have a major impact on the society's comment so now you know how we have linked it with the the way the epidemic disease act 1897 and then how bal gangadhar tilak has reacted reacted to it how we has contradicted the measures and then how the two brothers have assassinated wc ran and then again how the countries how, how india has reacted to the migrant workers because of the national lockdown and how the various countries have gone ahead with overreach of power we have taken the example of israel and hungary and also in regards to the various countries that is philippines and chile and now again the modern states so these are the things wherein we have looked at and the conclusion can be that this one the dismantling of the constitution in institutions will have a major impact on the society and what institutions are we talking about here can anyone please let me know i will conclude it just one minute what institutions are we talking about here what institutions are we talking about here what are the institutions which are dismantled because not because of the national lockdown but because of the overreach of the power because of the overreach of the power by few countries across the globe which are the institutions the institutions are nothing but the media the judiciary civil society civil liberties and then human rights and overall it is a democracy that is the constitution democracy so we have looked at various aspects in regards to the prelims and also in regards to the main and this is how you need to identify you need to focus on the keywords and then you will be better equipped in regards to the understanding the editorials in a broader perspective and in regards to the what you say comprehensive manner just do not look at editorial and say that oh this is not important for prelims or mains no it will be certainly important for mains when it is important for mains it will be important for prelims so from this today we have taken in regards to the epidemic disease act 1897 so we have in regards to the bal gangadhar tilak and also we have the two what you say who has actually uh, described him as the uh, father of the unrest so that we have looked at today it is valentine chirol so there are definitely what you say two brothers damodar hari chapekar and then balakrishna hari chapekar they are the one who have assassinated it could be again part of the prelims so there are definitely prelims uh, what you say analytical and then factual uh, uh, data which i am possessing and then also in regards to the mains point of view so uh, i would say thank you to everyone and i hope it was what is a, a informative 
and then in regards to the prelims and mains point of view it was very knowledgeable also i feel it and then yes i, I would say uh, thank you yes uh, thank you kumari thank you madhu and then please do like the uh, video subscribe the video and then go ahead with the hitting the bell button for further notification when you are watching the video in the youtube that is let's crack upsc csc english and if you haven't subscribed for the let's crack upsc csc english please do subscribe with my code that is sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 and you please go ahead with subscribing for 24 months because for 24 months you will be paying only for the amount of 13 months the amount which is actually for the 13 months because of the offer you will be paying for the entire 24 months and then with using my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala while you are subscribing you will get additional 10% discount and then for the 24 months you need to pay just 43200 it is not that you can watch my videos in regards to the what is this, uh, under an academy platform that you have special classes you have an academy plus classes wherein it would be discussed at length various what do you say uh, topics and then you can make sure that make sure that you also go ahead with uh, uh, subscribing for 24 months okay there is a uh, point wherein it has been made by malvika sajivan says sir please give a class on rapid test and okay what is that and rapid test and and what test in the sense you you, you wanted like a, what is a preliminary or mains point of view so please give a class on rapid test okay or, uh, if i have understood that i would uh, keep on asking few questions during the what is a session itself or please give me some clarity in regards to what kind of test so that okay please give us okay okay you are talking about that okay so please give a class on okay fine it is uh, yes 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 reverse it is rapid or reverse yes again today you have it even today's newspaper you have the icmr has given it uh, given uh, what do you say essay for in regards to this rt pcr test oh, yeah definitely i will go ahead with one day one class i'll go ahead with this when i am linking it with the covid 19 and also in regards to the uh, kind of clinical test and also in regards to the what do you say this rt pcr test i will definitely certainly sure <clears throat> sure malika sure malvika i will definitely go ahead and then uh, thank you everyone and then see you tomorrow at this time